God is so good. I have a children's message. I know we don't really have children, but I have one anyway. The message today is our God is in control. And even with the children's message, I was not going to ask the kids to come up front. But I was going to give each of them a yo-yo. I'm not very good at this, but the yo-yo, the yo-yo, yo-yo, yo-yo. Somebody's good at this. It just doesn't happen to be me. The first order of business is you take it out of the package, right? That's something I do. I can sit it there and say, okay, God, I'd like to play with the yo-yo and ask him to take it out of the package, and it would sit there. But until I do some action, it's not going to come out of the package. And then I got to find the little string and take the little string. And, and truthfully, I'm not very good at this. The yo-yo's origin uh, is un really un kind of uncertain, but some say it or originated in China as early as 1000 BC. The earliest known reference is from Greece in 500 BC, including a 440 BC painting of a boy playing with a yo-yo and writings that describe the yo-yos made from wood, terracotta, and metal. So people have been making toys and not knowing their toys for a very long time. One of the best toys there is is a pot or a pan and a wooden spoon or a metal spoon. If you've ever had kids in your kitchen and you had stuff down in the bottom shelves and they opened those shelves and they found a pot or a pan, all of a sudden they got a whole, whole band going on. And it's a racket, but it isn't because the word says make a joyful noise. So I pulled a couple yo-yos for the message because the visual of the yo-yo was what God gave me. Sometimes he gives me pictures. It's been a minute since he's given me some, some pictures like a toy. But in regard to God being in control, how is God in control with a yo-yo? Well, we have a part and God has a part. We have a part to make it go down. His part is to make it come back up. I can't make it come back up. And it's just the visual of we throw things out there, and if it doesn't come back up, it's not me. I'm, I really am lousy at this. So we put the little string around the finger, yo down gently, and if it, see if it comes back up. We have a responsibility in life, and God has a responsibility in life. And so part of the job for the children is we have a job as adults, and they have a job as children. Their job is to be children. Their job is to learn their lessons like manners and to close doors and to turn off lights in the house so that when you go to leave or when you go to bed, not every light in the house is on. Their job is maybe to feed the animals because what, what we do with our children, hopefully, is they learn responsibility little by little by little by little. And all of a sudden, they know how to load the washer. Gee, when did that happen? Well, it started with put the clothes in the basket, not on the floor. Clean your room. Anybody as a kid ever get told to clean your room? Clean your room. You got a laundry basket, use it. Or put it in the laundry room in the basket. And then we learn like that. And so we get the yo-yo thing, which, hey, it almost worked. It really almost worked. Wait. It's all in the red. Well. I wasn't very good at this as a kid, so I'm not very good at this as an adult, so hang on a second.
Crystal says it's all in the wrist, and apparently I'm not really all that adept at that, so she's done that as a kid. So she gets the green yo-yo, and there's other colors if she'd like to change it out. So when we ask God is in control, who is he? In Exodus 3, 7 through 18, 13 and 14, God said to Moses, I am that I am. And he said, thus shalt thou say unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. Okay. Hmm. I am that I am. That's a mouthful. If God's in control, the I am is in control. That's the capital I, capital A, capital M, not the small human I with an am going to whatever I think I'm going to do. In the New Testament, in John 8, the Jewish people challenge his authority. As we know, they challenged Jesus, and they brought up Abraham. Jesus tells them how glad Abraham is to see the day of the Lord. And they kind of look at him like he's got three heads. Not unlike some of us would have. When asked by the crown how he speaks as if he knows Abraham, and you can just hear the snotty tone in his voice, or at least I could when I read it, Jesus said to them, truly, truly, I say to you, before Abraham was, I am. And that's John 8, 58. And so we take a look at the I am. God is in control. And I know we're doing the names of God, and up there it doesn't say such and such, God is in control. But if you look at all of the words, all of the names of God imply his sovereignty and his omnipotence. And those are the two words that that I started with, with this message. He is sovereign. Well, what does that mean? You know, y'all know I had to look it up because my brain thinks I know because I'm an adult, so I'm supposed to know stuff. A monarch, a king, a supreme ruler. The synonyms are absolute, autonomous, unlimited. I like unlimited because God really is unlimited. He has no limits. Chief, imperial, independent, principal, ruler, royal, and ruler. Tongue tied. And then omnipotent, mighty or infinite in power, having very great or unlimited authority or power, supreme, mighty power. He's the big deal. He's the big cheese. He's the one in charge. He's the CEO of CEOs. And as a human being, and I've said this before, I have control issues. It's for me. Tell him I'll call him back. I'm only kidding. And so I'm looking up some scriptures, and Proverbs 19.21 says, Many are the plans in a man's heart, but it is the Lord, his purpose, that prevails. So I got plans. I got me some plans. Right? I'm going to go to work tomorrow. Well, I just found out one of the units has two women that are out with COVID, and I want to know, did they get it on the unit? Because I don't want to work on that unit if they did. I got a trip to my nephew coming up. Now, isn't that selfish? But I got plans. But if you look at the rest of that scripture, it is the Lord's purpose that prevails. And so what that tells me in my brain, in my heart, and in my spirit is if that is where God wants me, he'll protect me. If that's where he wants me, he'll put me there. That's where I'll be. Proverbs twenty two twenty eight. for dominion belongs to the Lord, and he rules over all the nations. I don't watch the news very often, because I don't know who's telling the truth. And I think they all have a nugget, and then everybody spins it the way they want to spin it. That's just my personal. And so when I take a look at God sets up, God puts down. He takes care of everything. The dominion of the world is the Lord's. Thank you, God. 
In his hand is the life of every creature and the breath of all mankind. His hands, not mine. So I have to open my hands because there's things I hang on to tightly, things I would like to have control over, things I would like to go the way I would like to them to go. And I do tell God that. I don't know about you, but I do have conversations with God that I would like things to go a certain way. But I know it's like up to him on how it's really going to go. Because it's in his hand is every life, every creature, and the breath of all mankind. He has a plan and purpose for each of us. And then there's no wisdom, no insight, no plan that can succeed against the Lord. Proverbs 21.30. Wow. So I have two little signs. One says, make good choices. Because if there's no wisdom, no insight, or no plan that can succeed against the Lord, I need to make good choices, and my choices need to be biblical. I will tell you in my humanness, they're not always. And I pay prices for a lot of stuff. There's consequences for actions. And then God will tell me or show me or somebody will say something because, you know, it's not that big hammer in the sky. I was raised believing that God was like this big character in a big chair with a, with a, um, do y'all remember those old um, containers, those that um, wet umbrellas were put in? An umbrella, like, that God had one of those umbrella things without umbrellas with lightning bolts. And, and if we did something wrong, it would be, ka-choo. that's not how our God works. We don't get hit with lightning bolts when we make a mistake. And it was so freeing to me to understand that, that my God that's in control is not out to get me. Because sometimes life felt that way. And he's not out to put me down or make me fail or put things in my way to fail. Now, I get to do tests over and over again sometimes because there's no failing in God's school. And so if I didn't get it the first time around the mountain, I'll maybe get it the second time. But he wants us to succeed in him. He wants us to do well in him. And so the other thing that I have to learn to do is let go and let God. I feel like, I know that's a set up statement, Life is like a big volleyball game right now because so many people are going through so much that we as God's children, as we try to reach out and help others where we're given the opportunity, have the ability to hold all of those things in our own hearts and spirits, and it will drag us down. And so I look at life kind of like a big volleyball game right now where The word says, cast your cares to him, for he cares for us. And if I'm casting my cares, and, and it's not because I don't care, it's because I do care that I cast to him, is somebody hits the volleyball to me, and I hit it up to God. And then I get the ball, and I hit it up to God. That's what we do with prayer. We, we hear what's going on with people, we see what's going on with people, but We give it up to God. And when I am slow to do that, it's heavy in my heart. When I'm really, really emotionally connected to the situation and it's really hard, I'm praying and it's just right there and it's so heavy, I may need help to cast it to God. Because I can't always do that by myself. And the word says where two or more are gathered, he's in our midst, but sometimes stuff is really heavy and we forget that he's there. Okay, I forget that he's there and I think that, okay, God, I'll take care of the little stuff, you take care of the big stuff. Can I tell you how often I mess up the little stuff? And so this whole past month as I've been working on, I didn't want to tell Tina we're doing God is in control. I'm not sovereign, I'm not omnipotent, I'm not in charge really of anything. My job is to get up and participate. 
not anticipate, not activate. I can't activate. I can call up the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, help. He can activate. But I'm not in charge. I can have a game plan, but I must be flexible. I can have ideas, but I must be open. I can desire things to go a certain way, and they won't always go that way. And in my humanness, I sometimes have emotions about that, because, you know, God made us emotional creatures. Yes, I get mad. I want to have a fit. I want to stomp my feet and tell God this is the way it needs to be, because he has the bigger plan, and he knows how many pieces of the puzzle are present, and he knows who intersects with who and where and what and where you need to be. I got a tiny piece of the picture, mine. And so surrender is a big piece of allowing God to be the God in our lives. And as I was looking at this message this morning, the question became, do I really believe he is who he says he is? Do I really believe he's sovereign, the God of the universe? Do I really believe that he created it all? Do I really believe he knows every cell in our bodies and every hair on our head? I know the word says our hair is numbered. He knows every hair on our head, even for those that are missing a few or those of us who it's coming out slowly. He knows. He knows what we're good at. He knows what we're not good at. Do I really believe he's in control? Sometimes I look at stuff and I'm like, what? How did that happen? God's in control. Yeah, but. Sometimes as a kid, I'm a yeah, but. Yeah, but God. And, and I go about my daily stuff and, and, you know, out of sight, out of mind sometimes. And when I was a kid, um, in my early 20s, I walked away from the church. I'd had enough. And I had a music satchel because I could plunk out on the piano things that were important to me, and I would drag my music satchel everywhere I went. And I would find a piano when I was really in a depressed place or a dark place. And I would sit down with my little satchel. There was always, God always created a divine appointment. Tell me God's not in control. And some kind pastor in the town I was living at would open the church for me for a couple hours so I could use a piano. And I would sit and I would cry. And I would plunk out the hymns and I would plunk out the melodies. Um... And I would whine to God and tell him all about it. And it never occurred to me that I was right where I was supposed to be for the lessons that I was to be learning at the time. You know, the whine was always, why is this happening? God, how did I get myself into this? What am I supposed to do? It wasn't, how are you going to use this? What's the lesson I'm to learn? Who am I to look for? How am I to help someone? That wasn't what I cried out in my 20s. I'd love to tell you that's what I cry out now, but it isn't always. And sometimes it's, God, you want me to do what? We're human. God knows how we are. He knows each one of us intimately. And the more we press into him when we ask the question, who is he? Do I believe he is the I am? Do I believe he is in control? Do I believe he is Elohim? Do I believe he is who he says he is? Who the word says he is? Do I believe Jesus raised from the dead? Do I believe dictates my behavior, opens the door to press in further. If I truly believe he is who he says he is, 
there's a chorus, and I, and I don't know if it belongs to a song that we learned in church years and years and years ago, we as the RevTab family. It's God is in control. God is in control. I yield my heart. I yield my soul. God is in control. If I believe he is the Lord of creation, if he is sovereign and omnipotent, if he has the whole world in his hand like we used to sing as kids, none of this is a surprise to him. None of us are a surprise to him. None of our situations or our earth circumstances, although they may be a surprise to us, are a surprise to him. He knew Kennedy would wind up in Hershey. I didn't. He knew there was a, a baseball game coming up that you could get tickets for. He knew and he knows because he is omnipotent. He is the creator of all. Nothing we do surprises him. He knows each and every one of us. And so if we believe who he says he is, my challenge till I see you next month will be press in as close as you can get to the I am. Because he's not an I was, he's not an I will be, he is the I am. He is our God in control. Amen.